What is up everyone? Hope you're all doing well and welcome into this quick little video where I wanna show you a bit of a different way of miking up a drum kit using five mics in total. So yesterday I spent pretty much the entire day uh, kind of reworking my drum kit layout and kind of just the general setup of things. I wanted to go for something a bit more experimental, a bit more compact, and the main thing I wanted to try was to bring everything down really, really low. Uh, the thing is when you do that, kind of a drastic change of your drum kit layout like that, you automatically usually have to change your mic setup as well. So I took the opportunity to also experiment a bit with the mic layout and it actually turned out pretty well. So that's what I wanna share with you guys today. The thing is when you bring your cymbals and everything down so low, you usually run into a bit, a bit of trouble with trying to get close mics in on each drum. Cause I had a mic on each tom and stuff like that before. But now with the cymbals, especially over the floor toms being down so low, it can be really tricky to get a mic in there. And even if you manage to get a mic in there over each drum, uh, you're gonna get a lot of bleed and stuff like that. So it's gonna be a bit of a hassle to work with. Um, so the idea I had with the mic setup instead was to go for something without any close mics pretty much with the exception of the bass drum and limit myself to as few mics as I could and I ended up using five mics. I could go less, I could go more, but I think it's a pretty nice balance for the sound that I was going for here. So I want to share first of all what this mic setup is. So I'm using two overheads and they're both the same. It's a pair of AKG C391B small diaphragm condenser mics. They're set up in the record man configuration. I really like the record man I've been using a lot recently because because it gives me a really nice and balanced, warm, kind of rich drum sound and not just so much emphasis on the cymbals. For example, with the spaced pair configuration, you usually get a bit more emphasis on cymbals, a little bit less on the drums, kind of the tone of the shells. Uh, but with the record man, you get a really nice balance of everything, I find. And also the fact that both the snare and the kick is equidistant and thus in phase with both of the overheads is a really nice touch. Uh, you can get really far with just the record man technique, just these two mics. Uh, but since I have a couple extra microphones, I wanted to add those in and see if I can make it sound even better. Um, so yeah, I'm using small diaphragm condensers. Ideally, maybe you would want to use large diaphragms or maybe even ribbon mics or something like that. But this is what I have right now. So same thing for you, use whatever you have and I'm sure you can make it work. So we have these two and then the third mic I'm using is an Audix i5. You can use whatever dynamic microphone you have laying around. And I put that here as a core mic or Wurst mic or a crotch mic. There's a lot of different names for this position, but basically the idea is to put a dynamic mic right here in the middle of the kit and kind of equidistant from the rack tom floor tom snare and somewhat from the bass drum kind of hovering here in the middle of everything and that picks up a really punchy kind of fat sound from yeah the core sound of the kit all of these drums and especially from the snare and bass drum so this is my kind of replacement for using uh, close mics on each drum and when you get to mixing you can also really compress this heavily to bring out a lot of like oomph and power from the kit and not have it be so dry so this is a really cool um, mic position to use and I really like using this um, but then, so yeah, that's three mics. And then the bass drum, I want a bit more bottom end. Like I have a bit of attack here from um, from the core mic and also the fact that both overheads, the, the kick is in, in phase with both of those. So I do have a bit of attack already and I'm using a 24 inch kick. So I want to really get that low end kind of, you know, rich kind of sub sound from it. So instead of a normal kick mic, I'm using a sub kick in front. And this is a Solomon low freak sub kick. So that gives me that, it kind of fills out the rich bottom end and gives me a bit of more depth to the bass drum. And then the fifth and final mic that I'm using is to kind of liven up the overall drum sound because these four mics produce a pretty balanced drum sound, but it can be a bit dry. So if you don't have a, an extra input for a fifth microphone, or if you don't have a fifth microphone laying around, uh, you can you know, you know can mix it and use some, some artificial reverb and kind of make it work anyway. But if you are able to use a fifth microphone, put it out in your room, or as I like to do, I actually have a hallway right outside of my drum room. So I put my microphone out in the hallway to capture a bit of natural reverb. So I basically don't actually have to add any re reverb in the mix because I have it naturally from the hallway. So the microphone that I'm using out there is a Samsung C01, really, really inexpensive large diaphragm condenser. Uh, I would want to upgrade that, but it is what I have and it re actually really does the job well for being put out there in the hallway anyway. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the general layout of this. So I wanna show you how this sounds and kind of give you an idea of what each of the microphones uh, phones do in terms of the way they sound and also kind of the, the purpose that they fill to combine for the entire drum sound. So I'll just play a groove a couple of times around, let you hear each of the microphones and put them together and also apply a bit of a quick mix on it at the end so you can get an idea of what the, the finished result might sound like. Uh, so yeah, hope you enjoy.
well, I hope you enjoyed that. Hope it gave you some insight and kind of gave you some ideas of what you can do with your setup and experiment with your mic setup a bit. If you're interested in learning more of this kind of stuff from me, I've just recently released three eBooks about recording and mixing drums. One is focused entirely on what gear you need to kind of get started. It's called Recording Drums on a Budget. And it covers a bunch of different kind of mic setups that you might want to opt for and some recommendations on microphones you might want to pick up. And then the second book is called Drum Recording Made Easy, which focuses more on this kind of stuff with how to position your microphones and gives you the entire rundown of everything you need to know with face and mic positions and different types of microphones, polar patterns, all of that. And then the third and final book is about mixing. It's called A 10-Step Guide to Mixing Drums, where I go through my entire philosophy of how I mix drums and give you a compact 10-step guide at the end of it that you can follow when you mix your drums to make sure that, you are, that you're staying on track and achieving good results each time you sit down to mix. So if you guys want to check out those eBooks, that you can find them on my website. I'll leave a link to it right up here and in the description below. And I hope to see you guys pick those up and enjoy those. Uh, so yeah, hope you enjoy the video. I'll see you guys around and uh, take care. See you.